I am so delighted to be here, although Horst has left again, if I rightly see this. Um, let me say that after all these months where we actually sat uh, and were locked up in our home offices, I think it is so consoling and so pleasant to be finally together again, to be able to discuss uh, things vis-a-vis uh, -vis Horst, uh, although you're absent. Thank you. Well, this lecture, of course, has a story to it. Um, as you can see from the title, the print day, when it was to be held for the first time, it was something about 360 degrees, whatever, and I always uh, ridicule the uh, titles that uh, Horst uh, selects. Uh, uh, what has not changed this time is the title and the description in the little leaflet. I don't remember it. I wrote it uh, about one and a half years ago, but I can still cover this topic. It is no longer 360 60 online for you 24-7 um, net uh, we will actually talk about uh, a failure the idea underlying this uh, lecture is the following if we want to do print then uh, we talk about the processes and the workflows but uh, I have to have something that I can publish and everything that takes place before that I collect what I need beforehand that I have prepare matters so that I can deliver it through various channels uh, this is something when you look at the projects you find things where you think and these things are what I've compiled. Every time when there was a new date for the event, I revised my presentation. Well, this is what I wanted to say a half a year ago, but uh, uh, shit, uh, too many charts. So regarding the meta level and the meta statement of this lecture, you should focus unlike I've done it in my presentation. So what will come out of my talk talk is a hodgepodge of things you have to do if you want to make sure that you fuck up. Oof, I'm on the TV. Am I allowed to say fuck up? Well, anyway, um, let's talk about uh, content management. Um, I heard this several times in presentations, and Horst said it before. There are some people saying we have fantastic, well-updated product data. No... You don't. You think so, but as soon as you want to start doing something with this data, you'll find out that the data is not okay. Interestingly enough, when we look at uh, the people who say, Oof, well, I don't know, they're probably not shit this data, but we have to do something about it. This is the people who actually really have good content that you have to update, of course, because you always have to update. It's like an old home that you constantly have to refurbish. But if anybody here really thinks that he or she has uh, a well-updated data, this is the ice train to hell. Product uh, data maintenance, well, you do this in passing as a sideline, so to speak. No, you don't. And most people underestimate the amount of time this requires. And we're just talking about product data. We're not talking about text or lyrics. We're talking about product data. They're the people who know and they can do it in their in their off time. And this is the way this is planned. Um, you don't shift the date. You carry on as usual. But this does not work. Let's look at a practical example. This is a customer of ours. They have 2.2 million articles in our PIM, but it's usually listed articles. This is also an issue that is very painful. They have 1.4 million articles, and if they want to index these or reference these, then you check or select 20 attributes, no SEO, just product information without any texts. So one attribute requires 90 seconds plus uh, five attributes. This is 99 years of men days. You can't do this uh, as a sideline. This is usually the point where somebody protests, but nobody does. You're nice. No, we have data. It is not so much work. It doesn't take that long. We say, okay, say 400,000. 
and the half the data is available in the data I need. Well, half the data is in the uh, quality I need, and it only takes me 60 seconds. And this is still nine and a half uh, men years. I can manage this because I have a tier team of people standing there, and if I actually assign it to various shoulders, then you can do it in three quarters of uh, a year or maybe half a year if you bring more people on board. But we're only talking about product attributes. And if you now complain about the 60 seconds, uh, I had expected Jan Horsa to protest uh, because he says 30 seconds. Yes, we calculate with 30 seconds, but we do so because uh, at Laudert we have a dedicated content team that doesn't do anything else with uh, highly professional industrial methods and this is why we can make it in 30 seconds but nobody can do it in 30 seconds um, who doesn't do it full time but uh, as, as a sideline data management is cheap we'll get some uh, students or we have some trainees maybe our cleaner has a son who wants to make some extra money I said in such a meeting image flip uh, and you can use these templates and actually enter the comments by customers okay this needs to be completed by the end of the year what shall we do well one says we have to work more um, number two says students and I said maybe you want to make a proper plan and this is basically uh, the choice for people. They can uh, say, well, do I just say it any diet or do I start planning? There is uh, one tip. Only one strategy works out at the end. <laughs> don't, don't start a survey on this one now. Um, if we uh, talk about product data, then we are talking about uh, three different types of information, roughly speaking. Um, this is not the pure teaching, of course, uh, because we have some people here who are in the know. But you're talking about master data, basically. This is uh, data from the ERP, technical data. This is height, length, uh, width. And the third type of data, and I would like to thank Christian Kleeman for this, staging data. This is all of the data I need to get a product across in advertising terms. This is a wonderful term that I simply stole from him and now you all know. But depending on what I'm looking at, I am faced with different challenges and I have different opportunities to fuck up. Uh, Talking about master data, I hope you don't feel um, offended. They're usually uncritical. They come out of ERP, but this is a quality assured process in companies. You rarely encounter problems there, and the this data is available there anyway. And usually you don't face problems there. But if you look at uh, technical data, technical data and data maintenance, um, in November 19, I, I uh, delivered a talk and I talked about these screws. Uh, has anybody seen? Uh, yeah, one, a few hands should be up at the back of the room. The technical data that you have, um, there are some uh, loopholes there. If I have good product development, then this data comes from purchasing or from product development. But uh, if not, I need somebody, but with technical knowledge. Looking at a screw, um, we did a quiz without films, without images. And we said, what kind of thread is this? Uh, what kind of head is this? You have uh, um, drilled, uh, you have countersunk screws. Um, you have flat head screws. Somebody who's in the know can immediately say, this is a countersunk screw uh, with a partial thread. But the point is, uh, what many people forget, if I uh, do not know this type of product, then I can't even say what kind of product this is. I did a quiz, uh, very entertaining. It is perfectly clear the bottom knife is a completely different uh, knife. It's uh, for heating and, and flump for plumbing or uh, the uh, quick uh, change professional uh, knife and the safety knife. If I only presented this knife, safety knife, on a chart without a comment, nobody, 0% of the people would know what this is unless they 
for by, by chance sell this item. I like this best because this is all safety knives, with the exception of one knife, uh, which is a universal knife. Universal Messer. It is not trivial to really tell what this is. And if you really want to make sure that this goes wrong, then <laughs> recruit students or, or trainees. Then you really get the best product data, the best technical data. Yeah, well, if somebody takes a photograph, I'll wait for you for, to finish. Talking about staging data, this is so diverse because it includes images and text. And even if I only talk about photography, there is the, the typical e-commerce photography. Then there's creative photography, ambience photography. There's different briefing required. This is different people who have to look at it and like it or not like it. And for text, it's the same. I have the technical texts that have to be checked for plausibility, then the texts that are advertising texts, how much um, storytelling do I want to include? And uh, Horst talked about it before. Then you have channel-specific or context-specific texts. And there is one thing I had last week, and it, it never dies out, uh, regardless of how many times you want to kill it, this beast channel specific texts we cannot use the same text for each catalog of course the layout differs each time and you need to change the texts accordingly <sighs> really it is clear, of course, when you have uh, a design aspiration I can fully understand this because I'm a media designer I, I, I know but in the graph there, there is this pointer, hidden pointer. There is a database. There is not somebody who's a mouth painter doing calligraphy. And for a reason, because you don't want this. If I want to pick up speed sooner or later, if I don't want 60 people to work on one single page because he likes this and he actually abbreviates as the third one uh, translates it. No, no. No. Then referencing or indexing our photos. I can do this with students, can't I? <sighs> this is the data model for images live uh, of one of our customers. And it's not a bad one. Can you read it? It's a little blurred. Uh, there are uh, content types, there are shot types, and there is view types. This is a relatively good one. Uh, you always try to consult people, and um, this was pretty okay. But even here, you find things. There's a sketch, for instance. There's a drawing and something else. There are three things that mean exactly the same. Then you've got the uh, cropped image. But this is one attribute. I can only opt for it once. If I say cropped image, I can't add any other type of information. And I only said it about 20 times. And then video and text. This is not indexing. This is a media type. You can index this properly. Uh, the content team does this very well so that it is really useful. But also the views. Somebody who starts indexing, uh, am I the right or the left view? This is the first thing. And then uh, slightly to the left, but there is no slightly from the top. My information, the term slightly is uh, probably uh, not often used because it's simply not useful. You have to, n to know how to do this properly. Of course, you can use students for this, but they have to be trained properly. And if you don't do this, you you get shit in, shit out. Uh, also, very nice, uh, Kassin uh, presented uh, a wonderful talk on AI. 
Um, what you often hear is, we no longer do the indexing because we've got AI for doing that. This is not magic. AI is not really intelligent. This is the misunderstanding, a common misunderstanding, deep learning or machine learning. It is just a pattern recognition system. So depending on what I want to do, this can be great or not that great. If uh, I look at Google Vision, for instance, it's fantastic to tell me this is an image of a tree with a couple underneath and the guy is smiling and he has a beard. Fantastic. If you then actually put it into a taxonomy, a hierarchical structure of words, then it is really cool because then I see this is a photo of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is identified and being in a hierarchy, I know this is San Francisco, this is USA, this is North America. And if I look for North America or for San Francisco, then I automatically get the image, although the image as such is not referenced. And if if you want to do such things, AI is fantastic. AI is also fantastic. This is the next but one uh, chart. When you talk about product images, then many customers think this is fantastic because AI can recognize all of it. And when I have new products, I simply have to take a photograph, then I run it through the AI and then the AI knows what product this is and automatically allocates this new product. Huh, sure. An AI can recognize patterns it has seen before. These are new products. <laughs> this is my uh, provocation. The AI can see this is a drill hammer, but whether this is the new one going left and right and the one with the hammer function or the EAN, it just does not know. It does not work because it is not familiar with the product yet. This is the hen and egg question. What works really fine? is uh, cropped images, uh, templates. Uh, we saw this yesterday. But again, the AI is good for training material. I talked to a customer who said, yes, we did our own AI and we actually f uh, trained it with 30,000 images. And I tried to be really serious and I said, oh, 30,000 images, hmm. And I thought, well, I think we have 800,000 uh, to train our AI, which is quite good, but it's far from being perfect, we, we think. We, you have to train AI and people often underestimate it. And uh, with an external AI, um, I simply hand out, um, but this means that you have to use a third party, an external partner. But at the end of the day, the day, when you start using AI, then I have to make sure that, that what is actually delivered is quality. Even if I have AI that recognizes uh, or uh, produces cropped images of uh, dresses or, or fashion, I have to check whether it can do this with my fashion as well. If AI, if you want AI to have the least uh, benefits, then you simply um, throw in AI without uh, um, thinking about the uh, what you really want to do with it. Talking about images, uh, image uh, procurement or image sourcing. I don't have any product images. How do I get the product images? And I heard this very often from industrial companies. We will produce them in-house, they say. Uh, this is not failure. This is a clever idea. You just have to think about what this means to you. If I want to take my own photographs, I need space, not only the set. I also have to have the space to store and finish the products for my shooting because I cannot simply shoot the the uh, products uh, with fashion. I need to finish it. I, I need models for, for wearing it. I need equipment. I need the room. I need somebody who's capable of operating this equipment. If somebody says, oh, I just bought a single lens reflex camera on eBay, it, this does not mean that this person actually can take photographs in the quality you need. You know what I mean? We know these stories. It's only cheap if you don't care about what it looks like. 
Otherwise, it's damn expensive. And what does photography mean? We're not sitting here to sell software, but since uh, we have big studios ourselves, we have the biggest in all over Germany, this is the workflow. So we're not telling people, oh, this is the very simple 10-step process because you can skip uh, various steps. It's a very simple process, just uh, s 10 steps, but you can't do with less. You get, have to get the merchandise there. You have to say, uh, th this is the merchandise, shove it into the studio. Then you have to make sure, what do I need to photograph? Do we need any retouching? Where is all of the stuff? Then I have to select the images I have to release the images and I have to do all of this and then I have to actually calculate it into 10 or 15 different formats and this needs to be done and this is not by a person who is in charge of purchasing and just does this um, in his free time with his uh, newly bought single lens reflex camera it still makes sense if it makes sense. It sounds strange, but of course there is this basic investment. But um, if you have a certain amount of photographs that you always have to take, then it can pay off because you, of course, have the maximum control. Is it worthwhile? If it is worthwhile, you should do it. But if you have seasonal products or you have product uh, development cycles um, where you only have to take photographs occasionally, then forget about your own studio. It's far too expensive. Interestingly enough, uh, we talked about where we headed. Um, customers often obtain consultancy to shed some light on these issues. This is cheaper than building a studio that does not take off later. This is not failure. This is a legitimate approach to get images. But you have to procure, you have to get these images. The suppliers have these things and they're happy when they can supply images. But you have to ask them for it. I don't know who said it in his or her presentation. The companies are not thinking about the consumers or the users of the photographs. The manufacturers are only thinking um, about uh, delivering these photographs. They're not thinking about this. So you have to ask them for these images. But you need people for that. And then the quality of what you get delivered is varies so widely. If we focus on the technical side of things, there are uh, suppliers who uh, actually s deliver 500 by 500 pickles. This is not enough to zoom in. So what do I do? The first impulse of customers is, okay, if, if the quality is not okay, then we can't take those uh, images. Yeah, but uh, what's better, no image or a poor image? Yeah, you have to give it a second thought. It's m many say, well, I'll call the um, uh, supplier again and they should actually send these uh, photos in a better quality. <laughs> Suppliers don't have spare time. They don't send shit first and think, thinking, well, will they find out? Uh, th they won't have anything else. I only have two possibilities. I can either say, oh, well, I, I take these photographs in that quality or I can say, okay, I'll have photographs taken or I'll um, actually take the photographs myself. The attitude uh, towards uh, um, low pixel images uh, uh, is not so stern. Uh, all of a sudden 6000 by 6000 is no longer the standard. We talked about technology but it's also about how I want to present the products. When I look at the web shop and I have this fire view where I see the product side by side and uh, because I was looking for drilling machines uh, then I see drilling machines from different 10 different producers and they all have different formats this can be harmonized by actually uh, uh, scaling them in the same way but uh, how do I want to stage a product? Uh, would I like to see the model front view, side view, and something for the colors? The supplier won't deliver this. So staging itself is a thing that I have to look at in detail, and somebody has to do this. 
I have to get the images, I have to assess them in terms of uh, technology, of technical specifications, and in terms of quality. And if you really want to fuck it up, then you invite people um, or content managers to do this uh, as a sideline. Fantastic. They don't have the time for that. They get the images, they feed it into the system and say, okay, I'm done. I can go back to my real work. And um, there are always several options. <laughs> We have customers who always draw 25. Don't upload shitty images or draw 25. This is what the chart says. Um, if the quality is not okay, you can react in various ways. Um, there were customers who said, I can't control the quality, um, so I don't do it. And, but why does my webshop look so strange? I don't know. This is uh, asset screenshots. Uh, th this, this tells you a story. Somebody had a TIFF. This used to be a TIFF. Then somebody actually added a .jpg uh, because this magically changes the format. And our um, image proofing process. I love this customer honestly because he really showed me the limits of what is feasible. The, 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 the data is actually PNG data. Isn't that great? Oh, where do we get the images from? This is an extract from an original uh, customer diagram. We blurred the, the perpetrator. Um, at times I get images, but where we save them, I don't know. And I don't even know where they get them from. Maybe from the image plate or maybe from the cloud. The cloud. Mm, mm, image plates. Hands up. Who has uh, uh, worked with uh, image plates? Which decade was that? And for whom it is less than 10 years ago? Okay, I'm really sorry for you. We get things that you get uh, JPEG because Photoshop can do that, so it must be okay. We had one PNG, uh, a conversion process went wrong, and I looked at it and I thought, well, this is 1500 by 2000 pixel, 120 MB? How's that possible? And my favorite thing was a PNG with print color profiles, but not current ones, but uh, ones obsolete since uh, 2006 for coarse grids. Of course, it was RGB data. And everybody knows printing graphic or maybe portable network uh, graphic PNG. What a difference. But let us be serious because there is a reason for the, such images being uploaded. And the screenshots uh, we see tell a story that first makes you laugh, but then ponder. Somebody has used a quality assured process to upload a package of images. The prerequisite was um, the images plus an Excel a spreadsheet uh, with a name and description. And if there are no images included or the Excel spreadsheet, is is broken there's a clear instruction and very short here somebody has used the same a whole day to upload the same package every two or three minutes because it wasn't accepted and this is tragic this is really tr it's a tragedy yeah I reacted exactly the same way and I thought well come on computers are stubborn the definition of insanity is doing the same thing all over again with and expecting a different outcome. But somebody who does such a thing must be under tremendous pressure. People who upload the images at times, you simply want to embrace them, hug them, because you can see these are people are doing the jobs of two or three or more people and it's perfectly clear that the outcome is like this because the person has not waited for the images to be accepted. Uh, this person probably had the web shop open, uploaded it, waited it for two minutes, saw it hasn't arrived and has uploaded it again. 
this means I really want to urge you if you have employees in your company and they're complaining that they're uh, doing too much or they become very quiet, then please, please take a close look. You're probably driving something into a burnout. And this should never happen. This is only fun for a very short while. That was the serious part of my presentation. But it is really at my heart. Duplicates. Uh, what of course happens is uh, uh, somebody sees, oh, the images have not been uploaded, uploads them again, and then you actually hope that the images that were missing the two, for magic reasons, uh, are now featured in this package. The, these guys aren't stupid, they're simply stressed out. People say, duplicate, uh, that's easy. We simply filter them out when we import them and dump them. Great idea. Because, first of all, uh, what is a duplicate to start with? If th I speak about the identical file, the 100% identical file, that's easy to filter out. But if part of an automated process, I open an image, enter some metadata and close it again, then the hash of the file is different and then it's no longer identical. So I have to look at the pixels. Uh, but if I have the same image in three sizes, then as a human being, I can immediately say it's the same image, but it's not a duplicate. This means actually with AI or with hashing processes, you really want to make sure are they very similar. And what you get is this, the top images, this is uh, the second image twice, but one is a lot bigger than the other. We, in this case, uh, you, uh, we need a perceptive flash uh, process and we immediately identify this, but well, irregular, irrespective of whether you AI or caching, um, th the diagrams that are so similar, um, these diagrams, so yeah, they differ because there's a four and there's a three. And there are two figures, two numbers different. It, unfortunately, it's a little bird, you can't read it. Well, for a human being, it's perfectly clear it's not the same picture. Duplicate identification must be done in a quality assured process and at the end of the day somebody a human being has to have a look at it and this can be done by an external service provider but what uh, is really a stupid idea is every type of process uh, that uh, actually um, dumps uh, uh, items uh, without checking them. The, the FTP server, uh, where you get the same um, upload several times, I have to return my mug if, 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 mug if I return uh, or repeat this phrase. Uh, talking about processes, processes are a thing. Um, I add an extract of this. This is an original image uh, procurement process used by one of our customers. And um, I compiled this process somewhat, turned it into a diagram because it was not so easy to read. That's not nice. Uh, yeah, it's this thing is annoying me. So I compiled it in, in diagram. This is the process, what it looked like. This is so much easier to understand. But it's basically the same process we're showing here. And in processes, you often talk about workflows and sequences, but people hardly look at the responsibilities. Who's wearing the hat? And this is just as important in processes as uh, parallel processes. Because if I really want to fuck up with content, then I have two practical possibilities. Either nobody is really responsible for it, or since uh, this has grown over time, you have... Uh, a person responsible um, who does not have the core competence for it. It's not that complicated. The people who have a certain competency should be wearing the hat. 
what about the technical data and what about the correctness of the text? Then this is done by the technical department or the product manager or by the department. The people who know about the products, not the marketing department. But if uh, somebody has to decide whether the texts are nice and, and uh, uh, do uh, some storytelling, then it's up to marketing. And when we talk about print, because we're at the, at the print day, so we have to talk about print, the uh, the uh, statement is, we've always done it like this. And then you end up with a grown structure. And as a result, sooner or later, you end up with processes where the purchasing department uh, green lights the design. Uh, but uh, th this is misguided. This is wrong. Or the other way around, I also saw marketing departments that actually designed all of the brochures, but at the end of the day, never asked the uh, procurement department which products uh, are in. You simply have to say, no, let me have a look at it. There are three aspects you need to consider what will be included. And this is the product management and purchasing. And if I uh, look at the uh, pages, this is done together with marketing. But if it is about the look, the overall look, this is the end of the responsibility borne by the purchasing department, the sourcing department, because as a rule, they're simply not qualified enough. It would be a bad process to do that. This is not a duplicate. It says something different. Print processes ought to be quick. And of course, you roughly start to design why the products, uh, uh, why the content is being generated. This is perfectly normal uh, because uh, when you have 1.4 million products, you don't want to do it uh, uh, sequentially. That's perfectly normal. But you have to watch out. If I really want to lose time and burn some money, then I uh, have to start doing this without knowing which products will be included. Again, this is one of my favorite topics. Um, how can I tell Peter to take the photograph? Not at all. Because there, there is good and bad communication in a project. Oh, what is the status here? Uh, this uh, really has to die a, a horrible long death. This is uh, communication we no longer need because we have systems in the third uh, uh, millennium. I have a dashboard and I can know immediately uh, about the status, the state of affairs. And if I look at this, I have a big system. This is an extract from an existing customer's dashboard. And there are people... There is a team of people who are responsible for citing and browsing the images. And if Buddy does the drills, one uh, does the sauna huts, and the number three looks after the screws, they are allocated to products. And then I tell them, well, show me all of the unfinished or unprocessed uh, images uh, um, for this segment. And uh, this is my to-do list. Uh, welcome to the third millennium. So I would actually then sort it by age, what are the oldest, but then you hear, yeah, but I want this, this uh, image now, we need it now. Um, okay, happens. I at times need an image uh, um, earlier. Then I include a priority box. Then I actually add higher priority. This does not even have to be formalized because uh, otherwise people will actually um, enter one million for the uh, priority images. And then this is a sorting criteria. And I still don't have to make a telephone call. It will work out automatically. But if I I then find out that there are people who are constantly fiddling about the numbers, then I have to ask myself, have I really understood what I'm doing? Is the process really okay? Because if there is a huge workload that uh, a, a team needs to shoulder, then that's the way to go about it. 
But if you really think, um, uh, that, no, this is to be done by Janine and this should be done by Petra and Günther should do this, we're no longer public administration clerks. If I only want to uh, d control by uh, for formulating tasks, and what happens if uh, Peter falls ill? I have to know because uh, the job will not be done because it's not in the pool that uh, the uh, team caters to. Somebody has to find out, has to reallocate or reassign uh, the job. And as we're so digital, uh, best thing is to call Peter and say, well, have you seen the new task assigned to you? No way. If you speak about process optimization, uh, who has seen this chart before? Uh, have, I, have I tortured anybody with this chart before? <laughs> Only a few people. This chart shows something really important. It shows how much time I can spend with optimizing a task uh, over a period of five years until I spend more time than I save. The thing that I do 50 times a day, um, 30 minutes for that, well, the day isn't long enough for that. If there are things that I do once a week and I save 30 seconds by doing it. Looking at five years, uh, I should only look at it for two hours. And we're looking at all men hours. If two people look at this element, then we're down to one hour. Never forget. Always calculate the time to look this up and factor in the time you use whether the, for, for checking whether this has really been calculated well. But this means, in our family there's this saying, in Cologne there is a monument, there's somebody actually shuffled himself to death with cards, but there's also one for those persons who actually optimize themselves to death. It's great to optimize, but you should not spend more time optimizing than you actually use for the job itself. And um, this is now the time for the uh, lessons learned. Um, one thing being that you should be more focused than I was in my presentation. Everyone will actually have a blind eye on processes. Every process has some nonsense to it and every process can be optimized. There are things that happen more frequently, others less frequently. What's important is, um, and uh, Hibbert will actually agree with me because he spends his days questioning what you do and whether it makes sense uh, how I do it. This is really important. And if you need help, uh, external help, third party support, then it does make sense to do it. We're a consulting company and for certain things that are not our core competence, we regularly bring in support, external support. This is not a shame. It's just a sign uh, showing that you've actually clearly seen the limits of your own competence. And you should not optimize more that you can save time. But what I find important, and that was the moment of silence, if you find, and in COVID times, this is, is particularly uh, important because we're only slowly returning to our physical offices. If you find that people are complaining and, and all become extremely silent, then take a closer look because life is short and life is too short to actually uh, fuck up. And this is why we have to take care of each other. And this is my upshot of this presentation.